In general, I'm very happy with my body, but I'm perfect. I wouldn't say that. She's one of Victoria's best-kept secrets and a reigning queen of the runway. But behind Yasmin Gori's picture-perfect poise lies a darker side. My father was really not very happy with me uh, modeling. I am putting him in jeopardy. I'm going to hell. <laughs> it's very dramatic. From a painfully strict religious upbringing to her battles with racism and self-doubt, how did supermodel Yasmin Gori fight her way to the top? In the next half hour, model follows this fearless panther of the catwalk as she survives and conquers the fashion jungle. I've always hated the word supermodel, and I prefer not to describe myself. I prefer other people to describe me in whatever terms they'd like, but I don't like to categorize myself. It's a title dreamed of by legions of beautiful women, but reserved for a select few. And a supermodel is the last thing Yasmin Gori ever expected to become. I never in my wildest dreams imagined that I would get this far, as, as far as I've gotten. Um, I just expected to happen, you know, I would model for a year or two, make some money, and then go on. Now, almost a decade later, the Canadian native is one of the highest paid models in the business, wooed by designers such as Valentino, Chanel, and Todd Oldham. The demand for her runway services has made her a rich woman, but it's Yasmin's sultry appearances on the pages of the Victoria's Secret catalog that have made her a modeling icon. I am definitely often recognized from doing the catalog. A lot of people stop me more for that than anything else I've done, actually. Um, a lot of men stop me. Ironically, Yasmin's meteoric rise almost didn't get off the ground. From the beginning, the pressures of family life, including her parents' divorce, threatened to weigh her down. Then there was her religion. My parents are German and Pakistani. My father is an imam, which is an Islamic priest. Muslims are not allowed to dance. Uh, you're, not, you're not really supposed to show your skin. Like, you're supposed to be covered. You're supposed to be modest. And all these things are kind of uh, completely the opposite of what I'm doing now. What she's doing now started when Yasmin was 17 and still in high school in Montreal. Her hairdresser recommended she meet with a modeling agent. She's been represented by Giovanni Bernardi ever since. Normally when we find girls, there's so much that we have to do with. I mean, we have to develop them, we have to change, and we have to cut their hair. There's, there's so much we have to start with. There was absolutely nothing we had to change about Yasmin. During the next year, she would graduate, quit her job at a McDonald's, and leave Montreal for the runways of Paris and Milan. Being ethnic, like when I started in Montreal, I didn't really work. No one, like I, I had like six bookings, I think, in the time I spent in Canada, because nobody understood my look. It was too ethnic. Yasmin credits her perseverance to her solid upbringing. I think the things that my dad taught me have really regardless of, of uh, maybe me not going on the path that he wanted me to go still affected me I think that he raised me to you know be a good person and to you know all of the cliches respect you know people and to be a good person and that is definitely from my religious upbringing it also made for a hard driving work ethic she's a very business oriented person she comes across that way and sometimes it's misinterpreted but for her it, I mean she is you know Yasmin Inc if you want to compare beauty to brains, she's an ugly girl compared to her brains. The president of Yasmin's modeling agency agrees. She really has so much substance behind her beauty. And I think a lot of Yasmin's beauty comes from the inside as opposed to only from the outside. In the high stakes world of modeling, however, it's what's on the outside that counts. And Yasmin has more than what it takes. She has the most perfect body. And she, she's aware of it, but you know, she doesn't take advantage of it. She doesn't uh, use it in a manner that, you'd say, other people would. At least not now. At one point, though, Yasmin used plenty of body language, and it spoke volumes. I guess that's where everyone, I don't know, discovered me or, or whatever. There was a huge response to the Saint Laurent show. I was wearing a, a specific outfit that was a very sexy, kind of beautiful outfit, and I must have had a moment of inspiration where I, you know, kind of vamped it on the runway, and I guess people responded to that. People have also responded to Yasmin's sexy poses for Victoria's Secret. Modeling lingerie is not my favorite thing in the world, and luckily I do do uh, clothes for them as well, because it's, you know, it's pretty intimidating being in your underwear. 
audience. Yasmin doesn't like to call attention to herself away from the camera either. I never put on makeup when I go out. I don't really like to dress up, you know, extravagantly because I don't want people to look at me. And in fact, I'd rather dress really ugly. It makes me feel really good. I like to go home and put on jeans and like look like crap. I love stuffed animals. I have like a collection of them. I like to collect things. This one I watch TV in when there's no one else around. I kind of just sit inside of him and like hug him. And I watch TV with him. And um, sometimes I put him in bed and I sleep with him too. This is my photo album. This is my parents when they first got married. Flipping through her old photo album opens painful memories of Yasmin's strained relationship with her father. I think one of his fears was that there's so many cliches about modeling, about, you know, the sex and the drugs. Going further back in her past isn't any easier. This means school. This is what? This is grade two. Grade one and two. Racism was kind of a problem in school. And then on top of it, you know, religion is also quite a heavy thing. And no one else was Muslim in my school. This is one of my best poses. <laughs> and then the picture stopped because then I refused to pose for photographs. And then my modeling career. Yasmin's New York City apartment is also a study in contrast, from the art to the food. So now I'm going to show you my kitchen. Ta-da! <laughs> On the surface, she has all the ingredients needed to create culinary masterpieces. But dig a little deeper, and Yasmin admits she's no model chef. Cooking it is a whole other story. It's very difficult. But one of my disasters was um, risotto. I made risotto for New Year's one night, and uh, it was disgusting. It was red wine risotto and looked like dog food. Well, speaking of all that food, I got really hungry, so I think I'm going to go off and have some real food instead of trying to cook it, because if I cooked it myself, I wouldn't be able to eat it. So I'm off to real food. Bye. So I'm going to go to lunch now, and I'm going to see you guys later at the Badgley Mishka show. So I'm going to get myself a cab. Coming up, Yasmin Gori's climb to the top. I can't. I'm a wuss. And her fall from grace. I was just a wild child. Plus, her lifelong battle with racism. People used to call me, you know, chocolate cake phase. But first, model follows Yasmin to a New York fashion show where she gets to strut her famous stuff. I think it's kind of nice to, that, you know, people like the way I walk. If there's, you know, something really kinky or really, you know, risque, I, I usually won't wear that. Yasmin Gori is talking about her revealing work with Victoria's Secret. She's on countless covers of the lingerie catalog. While inside, she's one of the company's most photographed models. The biggest challenge in posing in lingerie is, like, I think any woman's challenge is just to, you know, make sure all the body parts that you can't stand look good. But despite being in millions of homes and fantasies, her strict religious upbringing only lets her go so far. Living in the shadow of her father, an Islamic cleric, Yasmin has been forced to make some difficult decisions. In the show, I don't wear any underwear. And I don't like to wear underwear. I don't like to shoot it, but especially not to be on a runway in underwear. And it's very difficult, and my family is not thrilled. And so, and I, actually, it's part of the reason also. I mean, I have my own reasons, but my father would not be very happy to see me running up and down you know, the runway in underwear. Her modesty hasn't hurt her career, though. She's one of the undisputed heavyweights in the rough and tumble world of high fashion and one of its highest paid runway models. Today, model follows Yasmin from her New York apartment downtown Manhattan. That's where she's helping unveil a new fall line. So we're here at the Badgley Mishka show and I'm about to go in to get ready and I will see you inside. Bye. Oh, I'm ready to puke. Are you ready to puke? Yeah. Me too. I stuffed my face at lunchtime. It's about to fall out. Once inside, yeah. Yasmin makes herself at home among a who's who of supermodels, then gets down to work. Um, Where did we first meet? Versace or something? Yeah, Versace. Versace show way back when? When I was a baby and she was a pro. <laughs> You're still a baby. I'm not a baby. <laughs> Yasmin learned a long time ago that maintaining a good sense of humor is almost as important as good makeup and hair. It's not nearly as glamorous as people see it as being. There's a lot of travel involved, there's a lot of work involved. You know, you're doing hair and makeup for three hours before you even get on the set, and that's not so glamorous. Um, people expect a lot of you to behave a certain way. I mean, there's a lot. 
Sometimes the pressure is too much to handle. After a while, you kind of get tired of just doing I felt like I was on one big runway. You know, I never left the runway. I was just kind of walking, you know, back and forth on it. For Yasmin, living in a fishbowl is the worst part of being a supermodel. I don't do a lot of interviews usually. I don't um, answer very personal questions because it's, it's mine. I don't want people to judge it or to look at it or, or to destroy it. I, I, I like to keep things really private. That attitude was formed early on when Yasmin was growing up in Montreal. When I was younger, I hated having my picture taken. I think probably by the time I turned 12 or 13, there's no more pictures of me in the, fo in the family album. I hated having my picture taken. And still to this day, when I go home, I tell my mom, no, you can't have any pictures. If you want pictures, get in the magazine. Yasmin's aversion to the unblinking eye of the camera can also be traced to her childhood. All models were always the tallest in the class, skinny, ugly. I didn't have a date to the, the prom, you know, all of the, the, all of the above. It was, you know, it was very hard to, you know, be the ugly one in school and be the, you know, the weird one. So in a way, it's kind of, I'm, I'm kind of happy now to, you know, be modeling because it you know if I if I didn't have this I think my self-esteem probably would have been a lot lower these days Yasmin is considered one of the most beautiful women on the runway making a low self-esteem a thing of the past her skin is amazing for me I mean she can take tons of makeup and she can take absolutely nothing you know it's already there you don't have to do much not surprisingly, it's because of her flawless beauty that Yasmin was chosen for the Badgley Mishka show. She's one of those incredible superstar runway girls that, you know, she's like a sketch. She's like a, a designer's dream. You know, you put her in something, it always works. It's always over the top. Being a designer's dream isn't easy, but the grueling pace doesn't keep Yasmin from exhibiting her trademark professionalism. If you think of a runway, like, oh my god, everyone's staring at me and I have to do something really fabulous, then you're going to fall off the runway. Today, she is fabulous, and backstage, her performance doesn't go unnoticed. This is just all about Yasmin's body. She's incredible at it. After another day on yet another runway, the work isn't over for Yasmin. Tonight, she and her agent are attending a party for her modeling agency. It's all part of New York's Fashion Week, and one of the parts Yasmin likes least. I actually usually don't go to stuff very often, to parties, but it is my agency, so I thought it'd be nice to go and see them all, say hi. Inside, it's clear her agency appreciates the effort. How are you? Um, she's really private in her life, and, you know, she's doing other things that aren't going out, and it's never been part of what she's about. There's one Yasmin. She's classy, she's beautiful, and she always handles herself as a lady. After a long day, an even longer night, it's home for the busy model. Bye. 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 Still ahead, Victoria's Glamour Girl steams up the camera lens and reveals more of her own secrets, including the pain of being daddy's little girl. I'm, you know, still the girl that he wanted me to be, but except I'm modeling. But first, she takes a break from the savage world of fashion for time with some real animals. Hey, monkeys. Hello. I never really asked for this. I didn't really want to be a model. I didn't look for it. A strange dichotomy for a private person living in a very public world. I just want to have like an easy, happy life. And to have people always watching you is, is not comfortable. And I, so I would never want to be very, very famous because I couldn't deal with that. Even so, Yasmin Gori is one of the most sought after runway models in the business. And one of the secrets to the huge success of the catalog giant, Victoria's Secret. Still, she's not entirely comfortable with her success, making for a source of inner turmoil that began when she was only a child in Montreal. The fact that my father was Indian, um, you know, had an influence on my life because um, I wasn't like the other kids. Most of the kids in my school were white. And, uh, you know, I had brown skin. So that was, you know, they always used to point that out. And I was kind of like, you know, a loner. The experience well, left Yasmin with a quiet resolve. When I was a kid and these things happened to me, I just kind of took it in and absorbed it quietly. And I just dealt with it. I dealt with it internally. Yasmin has used her determination to overcome personal obstacles throughout her life. And now she's ready for new challenges. I like to do things myself. I like to do things with my hands. I like to get down and dirty. 
Okay? Oh my god. There you go. All right. Today, she's at the Reebok Club in New York City, trying her hand at rock climbing. Feet first. You can do it. Wait. I don't have a good hole right now. That's it. Good. Perfect. Well done. Ooh, this is scary. A hard climb is a perfect metaphor for Yasmin's life in front of and behind the camera. People used to call me, you know, chocolate cake face and, you know, kind of hideous things and the usual model problems, you know, skinny, gawky, kind of ugly. So those were things that contributed to my growing up and who I am now. Went to Europe and, you know, I did, I did much better there, but even then I think it was the start of, you know, the acceptance of, you know, the ethnic look. Years later, barriers still exist. There's everything of you know, all kinds of different types now, but it's still for, eth for you know, an, an ethnic look, it's kind of difficult like to get a contract, a, a cosmetic contract, or things like that. Yasmin's agent agrees. No, but I mean, like, you'll never, I mean, if it is, maybe, I'm not saying that they don't use minority um, girls to, to do some cosmetics, but it's not the impact of like, what we've seen that they've done with uh, uh, Cindy Crawford, for example. It's time for a change. I think that things have to go forward and this androgynous kind of look and kind of a grungy look kind of reflects what's going on and where we're going, in a way. At the Reebok Club, Yasmin is getting grungy herself. I and do finding see it, this obstacle a lot tougher than she ever expected. I can't. I'm a wuss. I admit it freely. Coming up, Yasmin Gori shows one of her best sides as model goes behind the lens of a Victoria's Secret photo shoot. Plus, she offers some advice for anyone thinking of following in her footsteps. Remember who you are, remember where you came from, and remember where you're going. But first, she bears all about the Victoria's Secret woman. What does she wear to bed? Um, I know what I wear to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hopefully towards the end of my career, and I say hopefully because I want to get on with my life and, and, you know, have children and do other things and experience life. I went from school to work, so I never actually had the opportunity to discover myself, to find out what interests me and what it is that I want to do. So I'm very much looking forward to doing that, to discovering who I am. Until then, Yasmin Gori intends to continue experiencing life on the catwalk and in the pages of Victoria's Secret. It's been a great source of exposure for me in the States. It's guys, it has no, you know, when the guys are interested, the girls follow. Victoria's Secret, is, it's, it's really enjoyable, actually. The people are really great there. They're very, they're very nice. It's funny, because when I, when I did um, my first Victoria's Secret show, I was like, okay, you know, it's just a, you know, a show, and like any other show, and I just showed up in my, I had like, it was really cold outside, I had leather pants on and like a plaid shirt and Sorel boots because it was freezing. And I got there and I had no idea that it was a huge media fest. Zillions of cameras, um, everyone was made up, you know, and they're like, you know, high heels and like, you know, fancy dresses. And I had no idea that this was a big deal. Of course, there is such a thing as overexposure. My father loves when I'm photographed in my underwear. <laughs> Actually, my uh, my agent has a funny story about that. My the, the one um, in Montreal, when my father went to go meet him for the first time, he said, "You know, please make sure that no one tries to take her panties off, or else she'll start to cry." Where he got this from, I have no idea. <laughs> my boyfriend's not crazy about me modeling underwear. I mean, him and my father are probably in the same boat there. Despite that tension, Yasmin has learned to follow her instincts. That is, until a model's worst enemy comes calling. I think like everybody else, I'll get older and saggier and baggier and I'll have to stop modeling, eventually. I don't actually work out, I don't actually do anything. I would like to do stuff, but I'm very unathletic, so it's very hard for me to make myself go out there and work out or run or whatever. Unless it's in her own backyard. And living in New York's Central Park offers a welcome haven from the pressures of a supermodel's life. Now, I heard there's penguins here. Yeah, the so penguins, find the penguins. Maybe down there somewhere. They're inside. I would really like to know what it is to not be on a plane all the time and to, to just, you know, live life like everybody else, to come home and cook and, and, you know, and, I don't know, take a stroll in the park and just do enjoyable things.
I think the one thing that I always say, like a lot of times people ask me um, for new girls, you know, do I have advice? And I think that my one piece of advice is to be true to yourself and to remember who you are. Remember where you came from and remember where you're going, because this doesn't last forever. By the looks of it, things should last a long time for Yasmin Gori. And for now, the daughter of the strict Islamic father will continue to reign over the runways of Europe and New York and the pages of Victoria's Secret and more. She's reached Mecca, and it's in front of the lens. Right there, that's it. Beautiful, right there. Wow. Beautiful. I think that what my father tried to teach me beyond religion has stayed with me, and I, I'm, I'm happy the way it turned out. I don't fear fame, I just, I value my life and freedom.